Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Aviation Radios. My name is Chris McGonigal, and I'll be your facilitator today as we cover a wide-ranging and sometimes intimidating subject, what is the correct radio for my flight bag? Today's presenter is Doug Ranley, and he's going to cover a large range of features, price points, and unique details offered by today's handheld radio options. Quick reminder that this webinar will be recorded and posted to our YouTube page along with all of our previous webinars. So without further delay, Doug, the floor is yours. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here today. And as Chris mentioned, we're gonna talk about handheld radios. And this can be a subject that can be kind of daunting for a lot of people. But a little bit about me. Uh, I've been here at Sporties for over 20 years now. You can call me an airport bum. I'm here on many weekends. You'll find me at Sun and Fun in Oshkosh. I love the air shows. And I do a lot of the new products here at Sporties. Uh, but I have been flying for over 20 years with instrument rating. I am an Army veteran, and the favorite plane for me is the RV-12. And what's not to love about the RV-12? It's lightweight, nimble, sporty, 3.9 gallons per hour of, of MoGas will get you 110 knots. I mean, it's a perfect plane for everybody, right? Well, not such. But we'll get into the right plane and right mission for different pilots here in a little bit. Fortunately for me, I'm not alone as an airplane nerd here at Sporties. We're filled with Av geeks. We're located on an airport here, uh, Indy 69 in Southwest Ohio, very close to Cincinnati, Ohio. We have a wall of windows right on the runway, and it's nothing to look out your window and see a P-51 taking off. And that's a great way to start the week on a Monday morning. We run a flight school here, both part 61 and 141. The 141 school is the part of the University of Cincinnati and Sporties provides the aircraft, instructors, curriculum, all the good stuff to make that happen. We have over 18 aircraft on our line. Most of those are 172s. So we have the ultimate test bed for everything, not just radios when it comes to aviation. Like I said, I'm not alone. Our customer service staff has a ton of pilots in there and they average over 15 years of experience. And they are just as geeky as I am when it comes to aviation. Uh, you can reach those customer service staff with that contact info on the right. You'll see there's two email addresses as well as a phone number. And yes, we try really hard to answer the phone. A uh, quick overview of what we're going to get into. I always like letting pilots know what they signed up for. So we're going to look at some key terms when it comes to uh, radios. I'm going to answer the number one question I get when it comes to radios. Uh, what to look for when purchasing a radio the big three brands that we sell and why, and then some real world tips and advice. I've found that pilots are always looking for advice and opinions from other pilots. And I is a pilot, so I is going to give you some opinions at the very end here. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, this is gonna be a recurring theme throughout this presentation. There really is a radio for every mission. As I mentioned that the RV-12 is the perfect plane for my mission. If you're a family of four and want to go nonstop to Hilton Head from Cincinnati, Ohio, that RV-12 probably is not going to work for your mission. You might be better served as Cirrus. Uh, very similar are radios, and our goal today is to find that radio that is right for your mission. As in anything in aviation, there's a lot of meaningless jargon, and there's some terms we need to go over before we get into the meat and potatoes of this presentation. The first one there is a transceiver, and this is used interchangeably with radio nowadays. Uh, a while ago, we used to sell quite a few scanner receivers, and we don't anymore. We only sell radios that can receive and transmit, and those are called transceivers. So that's what we'll be talking about today. VHF stands for very high frequency, and this is the frequency that you'll find the airband spectrum. Specifically, that's 108 to 137. Not to be outdone though is UHF, and that's ultra high frequency, and that's right above VHF frequencies. That uh, band is from 300 megahertz all the way up to three gigahertz. Uh, you'll find some military using this band, as well as our ILS glide slopes are using UHF frequencies. So if your radio gets an ILS glide slope, there probably is a UHF receiver in, inside of it. One thing to note here, VHF is used interchangeably for a lot of different radios. So you can, you'll can you find police, band, marine, a lot of other uh, types of radios in that spectrum. So if you're looking for a radio, be, be specific on airband VHF, not just VHF. 
these terms are used the most. This is what we look for when we talk about radios. Number one is calm, and that is the ability to transmit and receive with your radio. This is why we buy radios, right? If the, the stack goes dark and I need to talk to ATC or the local traffic, I can whip out a handheld, plug my headset in and start communicating all over again. Uh, communication radios are from the 118 to 137 megahertz spectrum. You'll find some comm radios receive even lower than that in the nav range if they're doing any uh, VOR transmission or receive over VOR transmissions. Uh, Com radios are dictated by the uh, spacing. In the United States, we use a quarter spacing that's called 25 kilohertz. And then the European standard is 8.33 kilohertz. Not all radios have 8.33 kilohertz. So if you're flying over to Europe, you might want to be specific about which radio you're looking for with that spacing. NAV is referenced as VOR navigation, which is funny because nowadays we think of NAV, we often think of GPS. Well, 15 years ago when these terms kind of came out, NAV was just VOR. So we still stick to that. If it says NAV, they're talking about VORs. And the VOR frequencies range from 108 to 117. And those are split into 200 narrowband channels at 50 hertz uh, spacing. And those can be used to uh, navigate left, right with the, uh, the indication there on the screen. Not a lot of people are doing this anymore, but it's still out there. ILS stands for Instrument Landing System. And this has to do with localizers and glide slopes. You'll see the frequencies ranges there. Glide slopes gives us the up and down. Uh, one note here, not all ILSs are created equally. Yesu radios, some of them will say ILS and then in little parentheses, they'll say localizer only. Most pilots when they think of ILS are thinking of a localizer plus glide slope. So keep an eye on that. And the final nav term here is GPS. Global Positioning System, and this can be confusing for a lot of pilots. This is not a moving map. If you look to the right there, you'll see these beautiful screens from Garmin that show my position, or ForeFlight that have obstacles, terrain, traffic warnings, you name it, all this great stuff. GPS in a handheld radio is an old school Latin long, and you're navigating to waypoints. You don't have an aviation database, you don't have an obstacle database. This is just a way to find a point on a map in the middle of a field. That's kind of what they use GPS for. So try not to confuse that with your beautiful screen on your iPad. The PTT is a push to talk switch. You're gonna find this on pretty much every radio we have. And that's a button on the side that you can push to activate the transmission. Uh, you can also, in most situations, find a remote PTT switch and plug that into the radio. The thought being is you can mount the radio someplace and have this switch on the yoke like you do with most installed aircraft. Intercoms plug into a radio and allow multiple headsets to use one handheld radio system. They also allow you to communicate between those two headsets in a, inside the aircraft communication environment. Don't confuse this with side tone. Oftentimes people think intercom and side tone are interchangeable. Side tone is the ability to hear your own voice when you talk or transmit. And most handhelds will provide this side tone once you push the PTT. So you can use your headset and talk without hearing yourself until you actually push that PTT switch. Uh, the center of the bullseye for most radios is gonna be a one user situation. So the intercoms are not that big of uh, application for portables. Bluetooth is something that came to the market here recently, and this allows you to wirelessly connect headsets to your radio. ICOM has this, and even the new Yaesu A50L has Bluetooth connectivity. And these are really neat, especially for ground operations. So if you have a pair of AirPods or wireless headset that you'd like to connect to the radio to listen to traffic on the ground, it works great. If you try to pair your headset in the aircraft, you might have some issues, especially if your device you're pairing to like, is already connected to something else, like your iPad. So your iPad might be connected to your headset and then you try to connect it also to radio, you're gonna have some issues there. Uh, VOX stands for Voice Operated Transmission. This is a very small use case. And the idea here is you're in a paraglider or an ultralight or you're all by yourself in an airplane and every time you talk, you wanna transmit. So you can turn this feature on on some of the handheld radios and every time the uh, mic is activated, it transmits over the frequency. PEP stands for Peak Envelope 
power. And this is regulated by the FCC. Most of our radios here will do five to six watts on the peak envelope power. But what's more important than peak envelope power is the carrier or nominal power. While some radios are rated to five or six watts, most of the time they'll only put out 1.2 to two watts. We'll get more into that in the next slide. So more power is further transmission, right? But more power is also more battery drain. We also get further range. Sort of, not really. And that brings me to that number one question that we were talking about earlier, and that is range. Every pilot asks when we sit on our booth at Oshkosh is, how far can I transmit with a portable radio? And we've done a lot of testing with these radios. Every single one of them we sell, we've taken in the air and actually tried them in the air. And you can expect anywhere from eight to 15 miles at altitude with one of these radios. Sometimes you can get a lot more. You can get over 20 miles given the right conditions. All these radios are gonna push out that five to six watts of peak power with the nominal or bench power of 1.2 to 1.8. I can tell you from experience that we didn't see a massive reduction in transmit range with a difference in peak envelope power. So keep that in mind that while it's great for marketing, it might not be great in the real world as far as differentiating between the radios. The next question we often get is how far can you receive with a portable radio? Well, that really depends on the power of the transmission. So if you have a portable radio at one end of the, of the, the spectrum and then another portable radio 20 miles away, they're most likely not gonna be able to talk back and forth because that's a long distance. But if you have an installed ATC radio with a massive wattage output, you can receive that 40 or 50 miles out. Unfortunately, when you go to transmit back to ATC, they may not hear your transmission as you're using a portable with lower power. I will say that NAV frequencies are amazing to, to get reception from VORs on a portable radio. We oftentimes will get over 70 miles out on a high power VOR with a NAV frequency uh, in our portables. Some of these, those factors that can affect transmission and reception, the, the biggest one is gonna be interference from not only avionics, but obstructions. If you're standing in a metal hangar, guess what? You're not gonna get very good transmission. But if you take your uh, handheld radio outside the metal hangar, all of a sudden life gets much, much better. Humidity and temperature also affect this because you can think of humidity as more obstructions. Uh, water is an obstruction. So the more water we put in the air, the more things our transmission kind of has to bounce over or go around to get to its final destination. Uh, temperature matters because the hotter the temperature, the more water you can put in the air, right? So the, the higher the humidity, the higher the temperature, normally you're going to find the less transmit capability of your handheld radius and your installed radius for that matter. So how do I maximize this range? If those are the limitations of five to six watts peak envelope power, how can I get the most out of it? Well, definitely the location is the best thing you can do. And that has to do with where you put the radio. So antenna obstructions, if you can hold your radio up higher so it's not in front of the panel, it has a good view out the front of your aircraft, you're gonna be able to transmit farther. Metal hangers, as I uh, mentioned earlier, are definitely a problem. One of the best things you can do is using an external or remote mount antenna when you're in the aircraft. There's several aircraft out there that have a port on the panel where you can plug your portable radio in and greatly increase the range of that radio, sometimes as much as 2x. Power matters. The more power I have, the more power I can use to transmit. Shift power versus battery power. We did a lot of testing on this on alkalines versus plugging in. At the end of the day, the, the best way to ensure you have the most power available for your radio is using fresh alkaline batteries. We've seen some rechargeable batteries that do a great job as well, but as they get towards the end of their life, they do tend to drop off a little faster than some of the alkalines. You'll definitely get a better transmit capability as a full from a fully charged battery versus a battery that's halfway dead already. And then last, but use a good headset with a good microphone. You can imagine in a cockpit with a lot of noise and you're trying to talk into that microphone that's on that radio without using a headset, there's all this other noise coming into that radio that transmits with your voice. So using a noise canceling microphone will make your transmission clear and definitely use an adapter if needed for that mission. So we've answered 
some key terms. We've answered this number one question, which is by far the, the biggest thing we get at Oshkosh and Sunday Fund. But now let's kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this presentation and talk about the different radios, because there definitely is a radio for every mission out there. You're going to find, if you do a search, uh, you're going to find lots of different options. And, um, and we're going to talk about those different things to look for uh, when looking for an aviation handheld radio. So we have a COM only versus a NAVCOM. NAVCOM was important probably 20 years ago, but then GPS came out and GPS has really taken over the cockpit by storm. So backup nav is now found in your pocket. Most people, their primary navigation is gonna be a GPS installed in your aircraft. Their secondary navigation is usually an iPad with a ADSB receiver attached to it somehow. And then finally, your backup is that iPhone or Android phone in your pocket that you can use to navigate by as well. The, the old days of whipping out your handheld and trying to dial in a frequency to find a line and then chase the line back and forth in the soup while you're sweating and while it's bouncing is, is much more difficult than just bringing out that iPhone and following the magenta line that ForeFlight has drawn out for us. ILS is, uh, I mentioned before that not all, all ILS capabilities are created equally. There are localizers that provide just left and right, and there are glide slopes that do the up and down. So, uh, we'll talk about the specific radios that do each one of those here as we get into the big three. Memory channels. More is not always better. If you have 200 memory channels, then you have to have a way to recall them. Many of these radios that have uh, a bunch of memory channels use banks. So you have to access a bank to save a memory channel, and then you can go back and forth between different banks. Uh, this is great if you know how to do it. <laughs> if you're trying to talk someone through it at Oshkosh in a trade show booth, it can be quite frustrating when it's all said and done. So keep that in mind that more channels is not always a better thing. Battery type. Rechargeable is great if you're going to use it a lot. Keep it charged up, but not as a backup. The last thing you want to do is be flying around and grab that radio that you threw in your um, your bag six months ago only to bring it out and the battery be dead. So keep that in mind with rechargeables. They're great batteries, but you gotta keep them topped off. All these radios have different warranties, anywhere from one to three years. Uh, we, we, the radios Sporty Cell are definitely the top of the line and we have flown with all of them. So we definitely stand behind these brands and uh, you won't have any issues getting service on these as well. Weight and size. This goes to that radio for every mission mantra that we've been playing up. Glider pilots always want a small or light radio, where seaplane pilots need a waterproof radio, just in case they drop it off the side of the float. Then lastly, a lineman might need a really loud speaker if he's going to put it on his vest and wear it kind of on his shoulder. He want to be able to hear that radio where all the engine noise is around him. Simplicity is key here. Learn how to use your radio. Make sure you test fly it with a headset. The last thing you want is to have an emergency situation, and this is the first time you've ever turned on your radio. Learn how to use it before you must use it. So that's what to look for. Let's talk about all the massive amounts of radios that are out there, because if you do a search on Amazon for VHF radios, you're going to come up with police band, ham, BRS, land, mobile, marine, and it's going to leave your head scratching. You've heard that old saying about a jack of all trades, a master of none. Try to stay away from radios that are jacks of all trades. This is why Sporties only sells the big three. We have, of course, our own brand, ICOM and Yesu Radios. These guys have been around for over 20 years in our aviation industry, provide amazing domestic customer support, and uh, can service the radios here as well. So um, we, we definitely put a lot of trust in these three brands. Within each one of these brands, there's lots of radios to talk about. We're going to start with the, the Yesu brand. And this is kind of my favorite radio from Yesu. It builds upon uh, their, this radio into a lot of other radios. So the 550L is called the Pro X from Yesu. It has a rechargeable lithium ion battery, has the standard 1.7 inch display, which you're going to find on many of the radios today. But it is a full feature Navcom. You get VOR, weather, as well as all the comm frequencies with a five watt peak output power. It comes with everything you need. So you get the lithium ion battery, the chargers, the alkaline batteries, the antennas, everything comes in the box. Well, they have different variations of this radio as well for different price points. 
So your standard 550L is around 290 bucks, and that includes the rechargeable stuff. Well, if you don't want the rechargeable stuff, you can step down to the 550 AA. Well, the AA stands for alkaline battery pack. And you can see those three items, battery, desk charger, wall plug, is about a $90 difference for the AA version. This one happens to be the least expensive radio we sell, and we sell quite a few of them. If you're looking for the commonly version of the 550L, we have the 450L. And then finally, they have the 750L, where they've thrown a GPS into the 550L and provided a way for you to, to navigate to waypoints. Remember, this is just a waypoint navigator. This is not a full-featured moving map GPS. Recently, Yaesu came out with the premium model. It's called the 850L. And this one's big and beautiful. It has a massive color screen, Bluetooth capability, GPS, VOR, ILS, everything, and has six watts peak output power. This is a really great radio, and it can do a lot of things. That is also why they include a USB cable with it. So if you want to program this using your computer, there's some free software you can download to do that. On the other side of the spectrum with the ASU is the 250L. And I really like this guy because of its size. It's one of the smallest radios we sell. It's a comm only radio. It does only do five watts of transmission power. But it, as far as price point wise for rechargeable radio, it is an amazing value around that 210 price point. Yesu as a whole, if you look at the brand, the pros for Yesu is they have a lot of options. So, so no matter what mission you have, you can probably find a good option for you. They're really big in ham radios. The Av Geeks here, Sporties, that also do ham, know all about Yesu and swear by it. So they're, they're also Yesu aviation users. Many of those Yesu radios also include all the accessories. So there's no additional things you have to buy. Unfortunately, Yesus can be a little bit more complex to program than the other radios out there. It's one of those things they do so much stuff, well, you gotta figure out how to do all that stuff. Sometimes you might have too many pockets on your shirt. Their manual is by far the largest one of all the radios. That just goes to show how much stuff they can do and how much stuff you do need to learn when you're doing those radios. One of the, the big negatives for me is the screw and headset adapter on the side of these radios. You'll find there's two little screws that sometimes are thumb screws, but most of the time you need a coin or a screwdriver to loosen up. So if the center of your bullseye is having a backup radio uh, to, in the cockpit, you, you're going to have to use this radio, take a screwdriver with you, unscrew that cover, put in your headset adapter, and then plug your headset into the adapter when it's all said and done. So that's one of the, the negatives there on the Yaesu stuff. And the squelch control is a little odd. You have to hit a button and then go up and down to figure out exactly how to operate that squelch. The next brand here we have is ICOM. And uh, ICOM is amazing. They've been around for over 20 years. They're really big in the marine industry. Their flagship model is the A25N. This is the most expensive radio we sell right now, around $580. But it is loaded with features. It has the Bluetooth, has six watts of peak output power, GPS with a companion app. So it's a little more intuitive than a GPS without a companion app. It does the VOR reception with a CDI display. So you go left and right. And there's a battery meter on the screen that'll tell you the, the battery life that's left in it. So th this is a really great radio and it should be for the price point. On the lower end of ICOM, they have what's called the A16. And specifically the A16B stands for Bluetooth. This is a commonly radio. It's a bit smaller than the A25. And uh, I'm a big fan of the non-Bluetooth ICOM A16 because it's only 280 bucks versus the higher priced A16B. They did put a massive battery on the back of this thing, so it'll last for a long time. If you're going to be on the ramp for a long time, this might be the perfect radio for you. It is definitely a comm only and does still do the six watts of peak output power. ICOM as a whole, they have Bluetooth options for you, so if that's important, definitely look at the ICOM brand. They are big and marine, and that carries over to the aviation line. So all these radios are, are water resistant. So you see plane pilots out there that have, have a habit of dropping your radio in the soup. Uh, the ICOM will, will take that. And they're also the biggest of the top three suppliers that we're talking about today. Since they do so much in marine and land mobile, they kind of benefit from the size of those other markets and have lots of uh, service and support as well as options for pilots to look at. 
some of the cons there, uh, Bluetooth connection is complex, especially on that A16B. Because the screen is so small, it's really hard to find exactly where that Bluetooth feature is. You definitely gonna need the manual for that one. They do have the most expensive radio out there with the A25N, and reading the manual might be required for some of that programming because of the small screen on the A16. So last but not least, uh, Sporties, we have our own branded radios, and yes, we're gonna be a little biased here because we are Sporties Pilot Shop, of course. But uh, our radios are, are designed with the idea of being the ultimate backup radio. The, the idea is you're flying al along and all of a sudden you lose comms, your panel goes dark, and you're, you're panicked and you need a way to communicate to ATC. You can reach back into the, your bag, grab the PJ2, take your headset out of the uh, dash of your aircraft and plug that headset directly into your radio. No adapters needed. And that's what we really focused with our radios at Sporties here is having radios without having adapters needed. Uh, the PJ2 came out uh, several years ago and we recently updated that to the PJ2 Plus. So in addition to having headset jacks on the top of the radio, we have a 3.5 millimeter jack there for earbuds. So if you're walking around the air show or sitting around home and want to listen to air traffic, plug in a computer cell headset or earbuds and listen to it that way. This also acts as an aux output. So you can put into an air, like a, a speaker, like a Bose or something else that has a 3.5 millimeter jack on it. The radio has a alkaline battery pack on, on it. Uh, it uses six AA batteries for about six to 10 hours of use. Uh, the neat thing about this is once that goes dead and you need to change it out, it's very easy with another battery pack. The other thing we did to this radio is we put a Type-C power port onto the side of it, much like you'll find on most Android phones, as well as iPad Pros, Sentry, and a lot of other uh, units is this Type-C power port. So any 2.4 power source, 2.4 amp power source will power and operate this radio. You'll see the picture over there with the iPad battery brick that the radio is plugged into. That 20,000 milliamp hour battery brick can run that radio for days. We've seen that at many a trade show that we'll just leave that radio plugged in and it can operate for a long time with that external power. So in addition to having headset jacks, it has multiple power options, making this kind of the ultimate backup radio. Recently, we had a request from lots of customers saying, I don't use PJ plugs, and I still have to have an adapter for my Limo-powered headset. Bose six-pin Limo-powered headsets are everywhere. So we came out with another radio. This is called the L6 Com radio. And you can guess it, the, the name tells you exactly what it is. It has the six-pin Limo jack on the top instead of the twin PJ jack. This allows you to plug your Limo-powered headset directly into the top of the L6 Com. Again, no adapters needed. The other really neat thing about this radio is that it can power your Limo plug headset. So if you have a Limo plug headset that doesn't have the batteries on it, or maybe those batteries are dead, the L6 can provide the juice to run the ANR inside your ANR box of your Limo plug headset. It still has the uh, Type-C power port on the side. It's the, almost the same form factor as a PJ2 Plus, along with the same accessories too. The only question you have to ask is which type of headset do you have? If you have a twin plug, you buy the PJ2 Plus. If you have the Limo plug, you buy the L6 Com. The pros for Sporties, of course, we have the no headset adapter. An emergency is no time to be searching for a headset adapter in, in your flight bag. We're using alkaline batteries instead of rechargeables. That's, that's good because they have a great shelf life in your flight bag. And of course, that type C power port as a backup. They're extremely easy to use, and we only make aviation radios. You're not going to find a marine version of this one because we don't do boats. We we're pilots, and we like to fly. So uh, there are some cons, though. We're not perfect. Uh, this is definitely larger and heavier than all the radios out there. Putting PJ plugs makes it bigger, and to do that, we had to have a, a larger frame on this, um, this radio. The screens aren't going to be nearly as bright and vibrant as the, the beautiful color screens you're going to find on the A50L. And these radios don't have rechargeable batteries included. You do have to buy those separately. So, the, so now we went over all these options. We have to figure out which one is right for you. So let's talk about your mission. What is the primary reason you're buying a handheld for? Is it a backup? Are you a lineman and you're going to be using this on the ramp? Seaplanes, or maybe you have a Piper Cub without electrical system, and this is going to be your primary. 
how often do you plan to use this radio? Uh, are you going to use it enough to keep your rechargeable batteries charged up? Or maybe Alkalines is a better solution for you. Tech savvy is important. If you buy a radio with a big, thick manual, I hope you can figure out how to use it because <laughs> it can have some hurdles in between you and the end goal there. And then finally, what's your budget too? Uh, some radios are very inexpensive and some are very expensive. So knowing exactly how much you have to spend on a radio is going to help narrow down the selection for you. So what is important for your mission? I go back to this screen here that has the key terms because this is kind of how we differentiate radios today, comm, nav, ILS, and GPS. And when I rank these for myself, I rank comm as number one, two, and three. This is why we buy a portable radio, is so we have a backup communicator. All the other stuff, nav, ILS, GPS, is kind of afterthoughts. It's good to have, it's gravy on top. But at the end of the day, we need a really good, simple, easy to use comm radio if and when an emergency strikes us. So as I mentioned, I, I was gonna give you my opinions here towards the end of the presentation, and I have definitely some opinions. And uh, each one of these radios is great, and we sell lots of every one of them. I can do this presentation at Oshkosh and sell one of each at the same time. So again, which radio is right for your mission? Yesu, I think are very featured rich. They have lots of tech, but who needs a time in a radio? <laughs> and as a result, it's a bit more difficult to learn how to use. So if you're a technical savvy guy that already uses a ham radio and know the AC programming language, that might be the perfect radio for you. Again, great radio, but make sure you read the, the manual when it comes to the ASU brand. ICOM makes great radios. Uh, I really like the A16 as a nice comm only. This is a favorite of drone pilots. We have several drone pilots here in the Cincinnati area that use the A16 when they're out on location. I think the A25 is really a great radio and the price reflects that. It is by far the most expensive, and the Bluetooth features there are really cool. Uh, the mission here is the monthly user. It's equally good for grabbing ATIS or for in the cockpit. It's someone that maybe doesn't use it as much as Yesu, but still wants something that's full featured uh, with rechargeable batteries. Uh, I do think these are a little easier to operate than Yesu when it's all said and done. Sporties, again, we're gonna be biased because we are sporties, but we think those these are extremely easy to use. Aviation headset, headset jacks and a USB Type-C power port are essential as a backup option. And the 3.5 millimeter jack is that gravy for air show listening. Really makes these the ultimate backup radios. You don't need a manual, you spin the knob, it turns on, life is good. So finally, what if you need more? What if this presentation didn't give you enough good stuff? We have tons of resources for you out there and you don't have to take my word for it. You can go to sporties.com and click on any one of these radios. And we have hundreds, if not thousands of reviews on lots of different products there. You'll find all the manuals there at sporties.com. We have a YouTube channel, uh, which we did a lot of touch and go videos and product power apps on many of these radios. So if you're trying to figure out how to use the Bluetooth on the A16B, yes, I did a video for that and it was frustrating, but it's there. You can find it there on YouTube. And lastly, you can always contact us here, the experts at Sporties. There's our contact information for our customer service, as well as my contact information over there on the side. Feel free to give us a shout. You can visit us here at Sporties at India 69 in Southwestern Ohio, or come to one of the many trade shows that you'll find us at. We'll be sure to talk to you then and, and find the right radio that is right for your mission. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you here or at one of those trade shows.